see my son for okay. Christmas. All right. College. That's a nice Christmas present. And he goes to college where? He's in Melbourne. He goes to FIT. Florida Tech in Melbourne. Okay. Very good. I'm Kim, and I got a rainfall shower head. A rainfall shower head. <laughs> All right. Wait, and who installed it? Is it already installed? It's installed. Installed. Even better. It's one thing to get a rainfall shower head, and it's another thing to actually get to use it. Uh, I'm Tracy, and I got this beautiful warm scarf from my husband. Oh, very nice. I figured with your husband it might be something leather, but that's nice. It's nice. <laughs> I'm Christine, and I got a purse. Ah, oh, is this the purse you got, Christine? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm Warren, and I got a pair of AirPods from my daughter. Oh, very nice. Air now, now you have to explain what that is. Explain what that is. They're little earbuds for Apple. All right. So you stick them in your ears, and uh, then they gather earwax, and you take them and get them cleaned off. <laughs> that's not their intent, but that's what happens. Okay. I'm Jane, and I got a one-hour phone call from my son. Oh, that's wonderful. An hour phone call from your son. Where is he living now? Tennessee. In Tennessee. Okay. I'm Ernie, and I had 20 of my family come for my Christmas gathering. Okay, wonderful. Your side of the family, right? Um, wonderful. I'm Charlie, and uh, my niece that I never knew existed uh, <laughs> uh, visited me for Christmas. We had a wow. wonderful time. Oh, that's a wonderful, Charlie. Yay. So name and what thing you got for Christmas? Yeah, her okay. job, Tamara. You? Okay. And I got a new coffee pot, which I love. Oh. I've waited for three years for that thing. Who are you again? Tamara. <laughs> How are you related to anybody in here? <laughs> this I'm is my wife, Tamara. She normally serves in the nursery, so it's <laughs> nice to have her here today. I'm Sandy. I can't remember what. Yeah. You got those uh, ginkgo biloba pills, if I recall correctly, is what you got. <laughs> Does anyone else get that joke? All right, two people got that joke. Come on, you guys. Wake up in here. Wake up. I'm Robert, and I got $100 from my son. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Have you spent it yet, Barbara? Yeah. Sneakers. Absolutely. Sneaker. Sneakers are expensive. Well, I can tell you what Tom got because he doesn't remember. <laughs> You got some ginkgo biloba too? <laughs> he got slippers, pajama pants. Um, the slippers he had, he slid on the porch all the time, and the whole oh. neighborhood could hear him like, shh, wow. Shh, shh. So I got him something that fit him. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, I had a nice Christmas. My kids gave me gift cards. Oh, wonderful. Any particular favorite gift card of the, of the lot? Eating out. Eating out, you guys like to eat out. Is your favorite restaurant? Cracker Barrel. What is that? Which one did you get the most gift cards to? That's where you're headed. <laughs> I'm Angela, and my husband fixed my sewing machine for me wonderful. for Christmas. So to me, that was one of the best gifts. That is. That's so. a wonderful gift. Wonderful gift. Yeah. I'm Sally, and I got an antique brass dog for my collection. Oh, a dog? Did you say? Dog. Dog, okay. I wasn't sure if you said doll or dog. Okay, antique brass dog. Robin, and I got an awesome watch. Oh, very nice. So what kind of watch? Analog, digital? Nice watch. Do you guys know what that is? They, they used to have watches that, okay, this is an analog watch. Who knows the difference between an analog and a digital watch? Thank you. The digital watch has the numbers on there for you. The analog, you have to watch, you know. This is an analog watch. Let us go up to Beth. All right, Bev. For, for Christmas, I got my son and daughter-in-law, Dan and Sue. Yes. They were here for seven weeks. They, uh, Sue cooked, uh, Dan and Sue fixed, gave me new bedroom blinds. And, Wonderful. Um, it's been awesome. They just left Wednesday. Aww. So it was good. It was good. It's nice to have family come and spend time with you. Mm -hmm. It's also nice when they leave, isn't it, Bev? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Depends on the family, right? We all have family. My name's Mandy, and um, my nieces usually always make us stuff for Christmas, and this year they made ornaments with seashells, 
But what was so cool about it was cool. my oldest niece made the seashells in the shape of a cross. And that oh, was just really cool. sweet because she's paying attention. Yes, <laughs> so that's wonderful. It, was, yes. it was very uh, meaningful for Praise me. Praise the Lord, yes. Tom just walked in. I think he needs to answer his own question. Well, we know what Tom got. He got pajamas. Congratulations. <laughs> pajamas and new slippers, which um, means you're old, man. <laughs> that's what that means. I'm Bryce, and a little uh, background on my gift was uh, I got my niece a uh, collection of uh, Hans Christian Andersen books. Oh, yes. And uh, she's six years old. She loves them. It's got pictures. It's got Snow Queen in it. It's awesome. Uh, so what she got me, because since I was able to give it to her at Thanksgiving, she came down early December, and she gave me a copy of Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book. Yeah, so I I really appreciated that. Text this to Mandy, and we're gonna we'll do the paper first, and then we'll sing it. All right, great. And I'm Darren, and um, I think, oh, I got a new tool bag. My tool bag exploded on me, and so um, I got a new tool bag. So I spent one of the days after Christmas actually cleaning out my tool box. It was great fun. <laughs> not really, not really, but it needed to be done. All right, so grab your Bibles. Uh, we're going to open to Genesis 27, and here's the plan for this morning. Um, we're going to read this text together. Please, everybody follow along. I'm going to read out of the ESV version. You might have a different version. That's okay. Um, obviously, the translations of Scripture are translations from the original. Uh, the original is text without error. Translations can sometimes have errors. Uh, Bryce, did you also get new glasses? Something's different. Yes, Bryce also got new glasses. Anyone else? You can always notice when people get either different glasses or they change their hair or something. We don't always catch up the hair thing, but you can always... Check the glasses. I didn't make any comments on the hair, but I did make comments on the glasses. Yes, okay, all right, very good. See. So Genesis 27, we're going to read through the whole text, all right, and then at your tables together, I want you to um, fill in the blanks, and then we're going to go back through the text using slides for those who are, are not with us um, gathering here in person. They'll be able to follow through this uh, line, and then, and then we're going to sing again. While we're doing this, you guys in the booth, if you could write down the names so we'll make like a little voting sheet, and then the, okay, perfect. Cut them up and give one to everybody. All right, Genesis 27. We're actually going to start in Genesis 26. If you recall, there was a, a oh, was it a priest or a monk? Who was somebody that, who, who was the guy that made the chapter division? You guys remember his name? The guy that made the chapters and verses? I don't remember. I don't know, you can Google it. You can Google it. All right, he didn't do it until like a couple hundred years ago, all right? Usher? No, Usher did the chronological timeline. Okay. He did that great big timeline. Well, there was a guy, I think it was a monk, and he's the guy who came up with the chapters and verses, all right? So the chapters and verses are not inspired, all right? In my opinion, Genesis 27, the, the, the story here actually starts back in Genesis 26, verse 34. So that's where we're going to start today. And we're actually going to end a little early, because again, at the end of the chapter, I think the last verses at the end actually belong with the next part of the story. So that's kind of how we're going to handle it today. So Genesis 26, starting at verse 34, uh, when Esau was 40 years old, he took Judith, the daughter of Beri the Hittite, to be his wife, and Basimoth, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. And when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, and he answered, Here I am. He said, Behold, I'm old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow. Go out to the field and hunt game for me and prepare for me delicious food such as I love and bring it to me so that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now, Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So one Esau went to the field to hunt for game and bring it. Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare for me delicious food that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord before I die. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice as I command you. Go to the flock, bring me two good young goats, so that I may prepare from them delicious food for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father to eat, so that he may bless you before he dies. But Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be mocking him, and bring a curse upon myself, and not a blessing. His mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son, and only obey my voice. Go bring them to me. So he went, he took them, he brought them to his mother, 
His mother prepared delicious food such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best garments of Esau, her older son, which were with her in the house, put them on Jacob, her younger son. And the skins of the young goats she put on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. She put the delicious food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son, Jacob. So he went into his father and he said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. And I have done as you told me. Now sit up and eat of my game that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you found it so quickly, my son? And he answered, Because the Lord your God granted me success. And then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, who felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he didn't recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. He said, Are you really my son Esau? He answered, I am. Then he said, Bring it near to me that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And then his father Isaac said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him. And Isaac smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be everyone who blesses you. And as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, when Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also prepared delicious food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's game that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, well, who are you? And he answered, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled very violently. And he said, well, who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? And I ate it all before you came, and I've blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. And as soon as Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me, even me also, O my father. But he said, your brother came deceitfully, and he has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me these two times. He took away my birthright. Behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Then he said, haven't you reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said to Esau, behold, I have made him Lord over you and all his brothers. And I have given to him for servants and with grain and wine. I've sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fatness of the earth shall your dwelling be, away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So let's take some time at your tables, all right? And let's fill in this grid, and then we're going to go through this story together and see what the Holy Spirit has for us to learn today, okay? One person mentioned it. Her name is Doris. If you recall, Doris and Chris, Chris, who's the pilot who normally is here, he, I think he's flying today. But Doris was here with us last week for our Genesis Jeopardy. I just want to let you know she's not coming back because she felt like the game was rigged towards the men last week. And I just, later in the Bible, we'll talk about bitter women and uh, what happens with the heart of bitterness. <laughs> so evidently, evidently, Charlie, there's a problem when the men win a game. There's just resentment for weeks and weeks. So she's not back, and I think that's, what it's, that's why. Do, we, do you want me to edit that for the recording? <laughs> Because I already That's started it. Yes, we're going to restart the recording over for those that are out here with us. <laughs> All right, yeah, when you're ready, we'll start it. You ready? All right, so let's, uh, let's open with a word of prayer, um, and then we'll go through our text today of Scripture. Lord, thank you for the privilege to be back in your house. Thank you for the privilege um, to sing and worship you this morning in the sanctuary, Lord, for uh, the message from Pastor Chad, Lord. Uh, from the Holy Spirit through him to us. 
Lord, to remind us of the importance of fellowship. Thank you for this group that's gathered this morning to do just that, just a fellowship, to love one another, to laugh with one another, um, to care for one another, to cry with one another. Uh, Lord, we are your people, and we love you, and we look forward to your soon return. Uh, Lord, be with us uh, this morning as we open your word and as we study it together. That's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we're here in Genesis 27, back inductively going verse by verse through the, uh, through the book of Genesis. And this is kind of a sad chapter. It doesn't open well, and it's not going to end well. All right, and as we talked about uh, when we handed out the, the, the sheets this morning, this account in Genesis 27 actually starts back in Genesis 26 in verses 34 and 35. And so um, that's where we're going to start this morning. Um, and what we see right out of the gate here with this young man Esau. By the way, how old is Esau? 40. He's 40 years old. Old enough to know better, right? Right. Well, I think what we're going to see in this, in this lesson is those of us who have children, those of us who, who used to be children, <laughs> That's all. That's everybody, right? Those yes. You, you yes. Those of you who named your children Jacob, you may want to reconsider after reading this story, right? <laughs> but I think we're going to see the reality that children can make bad decisions. Um, and here it starts right out of the gate with Esau choosing poorly. And so how does he choose poorly? All right, he has two wives. What's that called? Bigamy, Bigamy right? So he has two wives, so we're already going against you know, God's recommendation, God's command, right? How many wives does he give to Adam? One. He creates Adam, and then he creates Eve. Does he create Eve, and then he creates Jennifer? So he can have two wives? No, his design and his plan is one man, one wife, right? So already we got Esau making a, a mistake. We also, uh, we get, we infer from the chapter that what's going on with Esau and his parents. What about this first question here? He ignores or refuses parental advice. guidance and counsel. Absolutely, right? You're, you know, you as a parent, I as a parent, we, we talk to our children. We want what's absolutely best for our children. But in this case, it's very clear that Esau ignores his parents' advice, right? Because not only does he take two wives, right? But what else happens? What kind of wives does he choose? He chooses Hittite wives, right? What do we know about the Hittites? They were, they were idol worshipers, right? They, were, they worshiped false gods. So here we have this young boy, a young man, I'm going to call him a boy, he's a young man who is making very poor spiritual decisions, right, early on, all right? And not only do we see that he makes these spiritual decisions, he's, he, he, he uh, marries two of these wives, but also there's a verse here that talks about his relationship with his parents. Do you remember what that verse said? Verse 35, Genesis 26, 35. What happens as a re in the family as a result of these decisions? Grief. There's grief, right? He, he makes a poor decision for his spouse, and it causes grief in the family. No raising of hands here, but how many of you have experienced grief in your families because of a child's decision for a marital partner? Right? Especially if they marry someone who doesn't know the Lord. It's hard enough when they marry someone who does know the Lord, right? Right? But imagine how much more difficult it is when they marry someone who doesn't know the Lord. And in Esau's case, he proceeds to marry two women who don't know and follow the Lord God Almighty. All right? And so I think Genesis 26, 35 is probably understated, and it's pretty straightforward. They made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. Right? Now, despite this background here, the setup for Genesis 27, um, let's look quickly um, at Genesis 27, 4. Despite all of that, Isaac chooses, he makes an intentional effort here to bless who? He, he chooses to bless Esau. Now, wait a minute. All right, we have this background, and yet Isaac still chooses to bless Esau. Genesis 25, I know it's been a few weeks since we've been in Genesis, but in Genesis 25, 23, God makes it very clear. Who was he going to bless? Jacob was going to bless Jacob, the younger son. And in Genesis 25, 34, all this historical background to the passage of Scripture here, we have this historical account where Esau despises something. The Bible says he despised his birthright. So we have this historical background that, do you think Isaac knew these things? Come on, these things would have been very clear to Isaac. right? Isaac knew that the Lord had chosen Jacob. God repeated that uh, Abrahamic covenant 
And he said it was going to go pass through, it's going to pass through the younger son, who was Jacob. And you think Isaac was made aware of that day where Esau comes in from the field, sells his birthright for a bowl of soup? You, you don't well know Isaac knew about that. But despite all of that, despite God's sovereign choice, Isaac has made the decision to against, go against God's will, and he has chosen he's going to give. I, I don't care what God's plan is. I'm going to give my blessing to Esau. Why? It certainly appears what between Isaac and Esau? What's the relationship? Say that again? No. Between Isaac and Esau? He's got favorites. We've got a set of twins here, and it's very clear from the text of Scripture that the parents have, have chosen favorites. And the favoritism is dividing this family. It's going to be more clear in this passage than any other passage. Now, it's, look, there's a reality in families with children when you have more than one child, all right? There's a reality that you may have a child who is more like you. Maybe the personality is more like you, and you're just drawn to that kid more. You don't mean to be, and that can happen. It's something that we as parents of more than one child have to really protect against, that we don't show favoritism to a child. We're going to see in this passage of Scripture, <laughs> they didn't protect against it. And it's very clear, right? And we're not going to just give Isaac a pass here or get, just get after Isaac here because it's also going to be pretty clear that the mom has a favorite, right? And so Rebecca's favorite is Jacob, right? So here we get to this scheme. That's, there's no other question for it, uh, another word for it. This is a scheme. What's the scheme? The scheme is to steal the blessing, right? Did this scheme need to happen? What if Isaac had blessed Esau? You think God could have worked this out? You think it's possible God could have worked it out? Absolutely God could have worked it out, right? right? Man's blessing doesn't mean anything, right? But here we have, a, in, in this case of Scripture, where we're going to have mankind, as has happened with Abraham, remember, intervening to try to control their own destiny, all right? So we have somebody listening in the tent. Who is listening in the tent to this conversation? Mommy is, right? And someone is also pretty close. Who's close? Jacob. Jacob is, right? And this kind of reminds us back to Genesis 18, remember? The men come to visit Abraham, and who's, who's kind of eavesdropping at the tent? Sarah. Right, Sarah's sitting in the tent listening. Does this remind you? I mean, Genesis is quite funny. It just completely reveals human nature. This is us, right? Let's say this is you, and you're involved in this family. If you were the wife, you might have been listening in. You see something's going on between Isaac and Esau. I need to get in there and listen to what's going on. And that's exactly what happens. All right? So the scheme, we're going to steal the blessing. The elaborate scheme is hatched. They're going to steal the blessing, and they're going to fake out the aging and husband and father by what? What's the plan? Yeah. We're going to impersonate him. That's right. We're going to steal it. And how are we going to steal it? We're going to fake dad out. We're going to take our aging, blinding, father, we're going to take advantage of him, and we're going to impersonate Esau. So here's the scheme. What's the plan? By the way, who hatches the plan? Yeah, it's the mother. Right, so here we have a mom intervening in her children's destinies, attempting to help her, her son along. All right. What's the scheme? What are we going to do? Who's going to get the goats? Jacob's going to get the goats. Who's going to prepare the food? Rebecca. Rebecca. And who's going to deliver the food? So we're in cahoots. There's no question who's involved here. We're in cahoots. we got a mom and a son in cahoots against the dad and the brother. How do you think this is going to work out in the family, guys? I mean, did they even think beyond this immediate action? This is going to be a, this is going to be a grenade. This is going to be a... Yeah. Yeah, so Rebecca um, or, or Peggy and Angela are saying, hey, don't you think Rebecca knew that Jacob was supposed to be the favorite son? What's the answer to that? Yeah, of course. Both parents would have known that. Yes. All right, so then, so then this is probably okay because we know the blessing's supposed to go to Jacob. Rebecca is just helping God along. This is probably okay, right? No? He doesn't need our help. He doesn't need our help? 
But don't we like to help God along sometimes? Sure we do. Sure we do. Sometimes God needs our help. He needs a little help and assistance and guidance along to get along for what needs to be done. Here's the problem. Not only do they know it's wrong, they know it's wrong. But Jacob's already thinking about some problems. What's the problem? We've got two problems. What do we got first over here? Come on. We've got a hair problem and we've got a smell problem. <laughs> You're exactly right. Body hair and body odor. We've got a B.O. problem and we've got a B.H. problem. We've got some problems. All right. And Jacob, he's not only aware of the problems, all right, but he's aware, well, what could happen if he's discovered? He's worried about getting cursed. This could backfire on me big time. Look, what does he say to his mom? Look, Esau's, he's got hair all over. The guy's crazy. He looks like an ape, right? He's hairy. He's hairy. And he's red and hairy, right? And he stinks, right? The guy doesn't shower, right? They didn't have showers back then. What they, I don't know what they had. They had a hose. They had those nice flexible hoses that, you know, don't get run over by the cars. No, he's worried about hair and smell, all right? Well, we've got we to gotta resolve these problems. All right. Verse 14, I think, is one of the saddest verses in this chapter, all right? Because verse 14, Rebecca makes a prediction. Who's got the mic? Let's read verse 14. You want to read it from the booth, please? Wait a minute, that's not the right verse. 27, 14, right? Yeah, but that's not the verse I want. I want the verse for Rebecca. 15. It's verse 13. All right, let's read verse 13. But his mother replied, Then let the curse fall on me, my son. Just do what I tell you. Go out and get the goats for me. What do they call that when you say something that comes true? What's that called? Yeah, like a prophetic utterance, right? So I think she says this here not realizing what she says. It's like the guy, like the, whole, like the high priest that said, well, it's better for one guy to die than the whole country to go down right before they choose to kill Jesus, right? Here the mother says, well, just let the curse fall on me. Well, you know what? That's exactly what's going to happen at the end of this story when, when, when this all plays out. So we have this prediction here by the mom. Excuse me for putting the wrong verse on the slide. It's verse 13. Now here we go. The scheme plays out. doesn't take long for this all to happen, by the way. This all happens very quickly, right? Kind of like what happened in the Garden of Eden. And things fell apart very quickly for Adam and Eve. And things are going to fall apart very quickly for this family. All right, verse 14 to 29. Esau's water taken. Clothes are taken. Something is put on Jacob's hands and neck. What's that? The goat skin, right? And then what is prepared? The meal is prepared. All right, the garments are taken. All right, so the plan is they're taking care of all the, the things that we're worried about. We've got to knock these things out, get these things in place, make sure we do this right. What happens now? Isaac is deceived. The scheme plays out. Jacob lies over and over. Isaac asks him, are you Esau? Are you my son? Jacob lies, and he lies, and he lies. And what happens? It works. Shockingly. Shockingly, even though you see Isaac testing multiple times to make sure it's the right kid, Isaac is deceived and Isaac blesses Jacob. And at the end of the chapter, we see the fallout, the fallout and the consequence from this deception. Esau shows up, the Bible says, right after Jacob leaves the tent. Esau shows up. He visits his father. The deception is discovered. And Esau begs his father, Daddy, please, can't you bless me? Remember the text? He begs him over, cries. Can you just, what about me? You can't give me a blessing? And he gets a blessing. I put the blessing in quotes. Right? He does get a blessing, but I don't know about that. Consequence, Esau hates his brother and plots murder. How does this end? Lies, deception, theft, favoritism, hatred, murder, all in one godly, blessed family. Do you remember what family this is? This is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are the patriarchs. These are the, 
the guys who started it all, right, that God called out, said, you're going to be my own people. Out of you, I'm going to make a blessed nation. And this is the gang. <laughs> this is the, this is, yay. So Sandy asked, does Israel still call themselves the descendants of Jacob, the house of Jacob? They certainly do. Now remember, this is early. This is early in Jacob's life. So we're, there's more to the story. We're only stopping here in Genesis 27. But yeah, Ernie. Yeah, so... We're getting a little bit ahead of the story, but what's going to happen, and we'll come back next week and we'll go through the next, we'll go verse by verse through what happens, the consequences here, but the fallout is these brothers are going to separate. and It'll be years, decades before they come back together. By the way, also, Rebecca, after this happens, will never see Jacob again. She will die uh, a natural death. Uh, not, not right after this, but after Jacob leaves and he doesn't come back for a long time and, and Rebecca dies in that interim period. It's, it's just a tragic, it's a family tragedy is what this is. And it's in scripture with all of its ugliness. All of it. God doesn't hide any of it. Why doesn't God hide this? Why, they could cover this up. Why is this in scripture? So we can relate. These are God's chosen people. He chose Isaac. Isaac is the son of blessing. Jacob is the chosen child, a chosen twin. And yet they are, they are fallen sinful people. Just like us. Right? Did, were they in need of a savior? Absolutely. Just like us. Do we, do we take our leaders and put them up on pedestals? Should we do that? No. I, I read recently, I can't remember, maybe it was someone in this room that was talking about Ravi Zacharias. Um, and, you know, since Ravi Zacharias' death, I guess there's been some word come out that he, uh, he was involved in some sort of sexual sin. Does that shock anybody? <laughs> so he's human, right? Should we have put Ravi Zacharias up on a pedestal? Absolutely not. So we found out he was a sinner. So what? <laughs> My answer to that was, so what? The guy's dead, right? Do we discount what he said, how he preached faithfully the gospel of Jesus Christ, what the Holy Spirit said through him? Absolutely not. Every single person who speaks the word of God is a sinful person that God uses, right? You and I are sinful people. We should never hesitate to share the gospel for someone to point out our hypocrisy. If you are sinning, stop, Right? But if you're sinning, join the crowd. <laughs> join the crowd. We are sinners. And the people that we are talking to are sinners. Here's what we have that they don't have yet. Forgiveness. Grace. Mercy. We know what God has done for us and what he has in store for us. Don't be afraid to talk about Christ because you're a sinner. Don't wait until you are no longer a sinner to share Christ because you're always going to be a sinner. <laughs> right? We still struggle. I remember, I can't remember, we were talking to some guys in one of the men's class one time and we were asking the guys, when do you stop as a man? Now, men and women struggle with different primary temptations to sin. Men primarily off, will often struggle with sexual sin, with lust. We were like, asked the older guys, we said, Robin, when do you guys stop struggling with lust? When is it we don't have to worry about this anymore? And the guys are like, Never. You're like, come on. At one point, do we have to stop struggling with these stupid temptations? Right? And the older guys were like, no, never. <laughs> well, yeah. Thanks for the encouragement. Right? Good. Yeah. Right. 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 And don't get me wrong. So, so you may have a different primary sin that you struggle with. We all struggle with multiple temptations to sin. You'll have a primary sin that, for whatever reason, you struggle with. I don't know what it is. You fill in the blank. The Holy Spirit, right, boom, is bringing it right to your attention right now. Because you might be doing it right now. I don't know. Uh, but you'll have a primary sin you struggle with. And then you'll have some other secondary ones. But the primary one will trip you up over and over and over again, and you feel like, why, why do I keep falling for this stupid temptation? And I fall for it over. I find myself doing 
the same thing over and over again. What did the Apostle Paul say about sin and himself? I'm the chief of sinners. I do what I don't want to do. What? Why am I doing this stuff? The Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament. Look, I, I love this account of Scripture. Come on, guys. I love this account of Scripture because it, it's just real. It's a family in crisis. It's a family in, in turmoil. It's a family fighting, a family. The brothers hate each other. The one brother wants to kill the other brother. It sounds like a day at the Gato house. Ah, that was for you guys. Come back in. No, don't leave. Miss Tamara will come right back. All right? You can learn from this story. You can learn from this story. Come in. Come in and sit. Come sit and join us. For those of you online, we've been joined by David and Godfrey Gatto. All right. So anyway, yes, this story sounds like one day in the Gatto house. Have you ever been to their house? Right? No, it's the day in all of our lives. All right? Don't put your family over another one. All right? Don't put anybody else's family up on a pedestal. Oh, their family, they're so perfect. No, they're not. You just don't, you don't know the dysfunction going on. All right? If they put it on Facebook, you'd be like, oh, it sounds like us. Right? <laughs> like, oh, this is what my family is like. All right? This is why it's in Scripture. Genesis 27 is here to encourage you, dude, we're all sinners. Men, women, the, right? Who, who hatches the plot? It's the mom, the wife, Right? Right? You remember the story before where she is the obedient teenager who loves the Lord. She's willing to leave everything to follow God, to go to some, marry some guy she's never met. It's such a wonderful love story. Rebecca and I get the love story. And then a couple decades later, hey guys, old and blind, can't see, just put some goat hair on, you can go fool the guy. Right? The, the, the rose, the bloom is off the rose. We, we all change. When the children come, the body changes. The body changes, right? <laughs> it does remind us, those of us who are married, we have to work on our marriages, right? Um, marriage, is not, oh, marriage is not easy, right? Marriage is not easy. Listen, we're going to close in singing a hymn together, and then we're going to pray. Um, next week, we'll come back. We'll pick right back up in Genesis 27. We'll finish the end of 27. We'll, we'll go into Genesis 28. But I hope you're encouraged today by opening God's word to know that, hey, look, we're all sinners. When you're sinning, you need to stop. First of all, every time Jesus encountered a, a, someone in a sinful situation, what did, he, what did Jesus say? Stop. Right? He, he, he would heal them or he would help them, but he would always confront the sin. Jesus always confronted the sin. And that's what we have to do. Confront our own sin with the hope of the Holy Spirit. Stop. Right? Ask for forgiveness and then move on. We have a wonderful song here that we're going to close with, um, Jesus, Friend of Sinners, right? Do you all have the lyrics? Could you?
again. Beautiful songs. These two songs we sang today, the lyrics are just awesome. There's some wonderful lyrics in Christian songs. All right, as we close this morning, we do have a vote on the name of the new class. Our class will now be named CIA, Christians in Action. So congratulations, you have all been drafted into the CIA, making you all CIA agents. In fact, nobody voted for Mulholland Drive. I'm, I'm terribly, <laughs> terribly disappointed. <laughs> all right, so just as a reminder, we have our Christmas party coming up, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Uh, the 23rd from 3 to 5. Everyone's invited. You can bring your kids. Um, bring a dessert to share. We'll, we'll put desserts out so we can all gain weight and calories. And then we... Okay, so we're going to watch a Christmas movie called The Star. So obviously kids are welcome to come. Any other... Uh, uh, welcome. Okay. Um, uh, popcorn and a movie, desserts. If anybody has any yard blow-ups other than Christmas like other holidays, because it's a tacky Christmas party. Okay. So come dressed as tacky as you can. We are going to have a tacky fashion show. Okay. There will be a winner. So, yeah, so we're going to just... Will there be a tacky prize? Yes. Yeah, you're not going home. You're not going home with anything quality, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) So, what? Yeah, I have a Santa Claus. I have another thing. But I need, if anybody has any other holidays, it would be oh, great. Oh, okay. So, All right. You know, or any tacky Christmas. You for know, like for the pictures? <laughs> All right. If you'll stop the video, we're going to do prayer requests quickly as we close, but I don't want video uh, prayer requests to go online.